Welcome back to Switched to Linux. Well, today we want to do a little video on my production computer. I want to show you an app that people have heard about it in the past, but I've never actually done a video on it. So we're going to go ahead and talk about this. Of course, um, this deals with flat packs. So if you're new to Linux, there's three kind of competing ways to package software that is not reliant on software maintainers like distro maintainers and package dependencies, which solves one problem, although it makes a couple others. Of course, those are snaps, flat packs, and app images. I am not a huge fan of snaps. I've covered them in the past in fine detail. It all boils down to number one, they are distributed from one central source, which is a proprietary code by a company. Part two, they have openly stated they are not focusing on trusting the code. They're focusing on trusting the developer. And three, they seem to be trying to build a store as fast as they can without doing a whole lot of quality control. Kind of like what happened with the old Windows Store when the Windows Store was first showing up in the Windows 8.0 era. And I indicate this on the Snap Package stores looking at for example, Simple Screen Recorder, the application we're using to record this video here today. The problem is, is that the official developer of Simple Screen Recorder does not have any official snaps or anything else. But there's several versions in the Snap Store, and all of them are unofficial, and some are like, I have Chinese characters in the name. And so... Is this really a good, secure way of patching, packaging applications? And so what we're starting to see is this the same type of fragmentation stuff that we find inside of an app store with all sorts of apps of various stages of development scattered all throughout. Well, flat packs are equally susceptible to such a criticism as the that latter criticism but overall it is a better implemented system of putting together single packages because you are not dependent on a single repository this one on the screen here is flathub this is the largest repository in the official repository but nothing says your app has to be from here nothing says a flat pack has to use flathub everything is all open source and available you can create your own flat pack repositories and things like that of course snaps flat packs and the one we haven't mentioned much here is app images they are all open source in their final implementation and so that is certainly important now all of these systems uh, and we'll not talk much about app images here because really this video is about flat packs the reason you might want to use these, there's two major problems it solves, as we've alluded to. The first is you can package dependencies that work best with the individual application, meaning you can have multiple different versions of the same dependency on your system. And B, it will isolate the packages into containers and restrict access to your main system meaning that if there is some form of malicious thing going on inside of your container application by default it generally does not get pushed out to all of your system now that is a positive and that is a negative because unfortunately it also means sometimes flat packs don't work as you want them to because you can't access files on your directory now, I encountered this recently when I did the video on Anki. And um, after running the video on Anki, which I installed on a Linux Mint system, I actually installed it over on this Endeavor OS system here. And uh, when I did that, the problem I had is I was taking the backup from my phone and I could not get the flat pack to actually get in here and actually upload the file it could only show up from one location and that was a pain to make happen. And so I was like, okay, I had to manage your permissions. Now in Flatpak, you can manage your permissions. And uh, this guy here uh, from linuxconfig.org has some information about understanding Flatpak security and permissions, which by default is effectively a uh, something that only happens in the command line. 
and there really isn't a centralized single store to manage all your flat packs. That is another one of the criticisms where Snap at least has a Snap store. Although you can do a plug-in to any form of uh, different software stores, like the Linux Mint store, of course, integrates flat packs by default. The GNOME Software Center does flat packs by default. So you can install stuff without having to get messed with the command line. But if you find your app does not have access to the file system you need, you're going to get it, have to get in here and do some overrides. And so you're going to have to do override, a uh, flat pack, override, and then your app ID. Well, what is your app ID? Well, your app ID, you need to run over here and let's do a uh, flat pack and list. And flat pack list is going to show you a list of all the flat packs on your system. And you can see this is the ID. So if I wanted to change something in Anki, that uh, is going to uh, override the permissions. My ID is net.ankyweb.anky. And of course, case sensitivity matters. So you have to know this. You have to have a separate terminal window if you don't know what these are off the top. And uh, you might have to, you know, expand your window out or figure out what the first part of this dot, 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 dot op happens to be. And this can cause a few issues. Let's go ahead and run that again. Let's see. Uh, there we are. So you can see that uh, what it actually is now that I've given my terminal a little bit more room so I can actually get all my application IDs. You have to do this and then use your file system and then set whatever the equals should be. Now, here is the list of things that your override could possibly be. So we have socket information. We have file system information. It could be host, host Etsy, home, some directory, um, the arbitrary relative path to, to the home directory. We have a variety of different things. Now, this is not horrible to use, but it is actually a little bit annoying if you have to go in there and manage a lot of different flat packs all at once. And this is what brings us to the application here, and this is the application called Flat Seal. So Flat Seal is an excellent flat pack which manages the permissions with toggle switches on your other flat packs. So let's go ahead and pull up Flat Seal and we'll see how it works. This is not by any stretch of the imagination a complicated or difficult application. I just kind of wanted to show you what um, what it looks like. So when you boot it up, you'll have a list of all of the flat packs on your system. And then we have a global system. We do have good documentation. We do have keyboard shortcuts, help, and whatever else. Let's go ahead and pull up our documentation. So this is going to give you a nice little file document here to show you what each of these mean in fine detail. This over here, this last column is your equivalent uh, override in your terminal. So if you want to use this to learn what those terminal commands might be, you can go ahead and do that from the flat seal documentation. But you can come into all applications and you can override. So if for some reason you want to allow absolutely every device to have absolutely access to all of your devices, you can go ahead and toggle this and every application is going to do that. That's probably not something you want to do. But if there is some global thing you want to happen on every single flat pack at the point of install, this is a good place to go ahead and do that. So what I did is I came over here to Anki and what happened on this one is you'll see that we have the exclamation here. That just means that this particular one was changed. So all I had to do in order to download my backup file from my phone and get it working in my current Anki setup here is to simply toggle this button and now Anki can install anything that is in my home directory. Now the flat pack still has no access to anything outside of my home directory. So if there were some malicious code in here, it couldn't install something to Etsy. But it can access anything inside of my home directory. If I wanted to limit it to some specific file or some specific place, I could have just as easily come down here and give it what its command might be. So I might do, uh, I might do something like um, home Tom documents and then Anki. If I want to do something like this and run that and toggle this guy off. Now the only place Anki could see is inside of a folder 
inside of my documents. That would be the more, more, more secure way to do it for me. I just want it to be there because that allows me to do it from my downloads folder or whatever other folder I want to have. So let's go ahead and kill that one there. But you can see that this is going to enable you to access system bus, session bus, uh, files. Uh, there's uh, some persistent um, relative paths in the sandbox. We have the ability of various applications. Do we want to have this accessible on Bluetooth? Do we want to have it accessible um, on various um, other programs? You know, your multi-arch. Um, do we want to get high cannabis? No, 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 that's cannabis. Um, <laughs> control area network bus. Um, and then, of course, we have our sockets over here. So X11, Wayland, uh, fallback 2X. Here's your audio server. It set this up because some of these cards have audio components. But you'll see that by default, you know, there's no reason for it to be able to print. But if you had a flat pack you needed to be able to print, you could do that. Let's look at LibreWolf. You can see LibreWolf by default can access any printers that I have. It makes sense. It's a, uh, it's a uh, web browser. Of course, if I want to completely kill LibreWolf, I can just shut off the network, and then it's uh, a useless web browser that can't access the Internet because I've toggled off its permissions. But this will allow you to go through every individual application that you have and give it whatever permissions you might need in order to make it work. And it is available to install from the flat pack store. Of course, uh, if you're running any system that knows how to read your flat pack reference, you can just click the button over here. Um, and if not, then you can run you can run this inside of your um, flat pack uh, inside of your terminal, excuse me, so long as you have flat hub configured for your flat pack installation. So you can see here we got a lot of different stuff. Here's Endeavor OS as a system we're running. So over here to install flat pack on Endeavor OS, we just run system updates. We install flat pack. This is going to be the part that adds the flat hub repo. Restart your system. And then you're going to run this guy in order to install it. Once it's there, it should be in your menu. And I believe it's under accessories. Let's see, where is it? Yep, it's under your accessories. And then you can get in here and you can make any of the adjustments manually with simple toggle switches. So hopefully this makes managing the otherwise highly secure but sometimes frustrating flat packs will be a useful thing for you to do. With that, thank you for watching, everybody. Let me know your thoughts on this video. Do you use Flat Seal? What's your experience been with it? Let me know all that in the comments down below. Thank you for watching this video from Switched to Linux. This channel would not be possible without the backing of the program supporters scrolling on the screen now. You can be a supporter at Patreon at patreon.com slash T-O-M-M or at thinklifemedia.com. I also want to thank the open source community who creates such excellent software that makes producing this show possible. Please remember to support your software communities. Thank you, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.